Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to present today the result of our analytical and numerical studies of macroscopic stability in fiber composite with gen phases. This work has been carried out to, together with my colleague and mentor, Professor Gal de Botton. Composite materials are widely used in various areas. Here are some of numerous examples that can be demonstrated. The widespread usage of composite materials originates in the ability to reach required mechanical properties such as low weight and strength or properties of another type like dielectric permeability and magnetic susceptibility. In this study we consider a subgroup of composite materials fiber reinforced materials. These materials have very good mechanical properties with respect to tension load while their response to compression may lead to failure. Therefore, the prediction of their failure is an important characteristic aspect of their behavior. In our work, we suggest investigating the failure due to loss of stability under aligned and non-aligned loadings. Next, we will compare our analysis results our analytical results with the results of our finite element simulations. We start from the standard kinematics, denoting by hey, high the function that translates all points from the reference configuration to the current one, and then define the deformation gradient f. The equilibrium equations can be written in the current and reference configurations as follows. In our work we consider the so-called green elastic or hyperelastic materials that is, we assume that there exists a scalar valid function, psi, such that its derivatives with respect to deformation gradient produce the nominal stress tensor. We consider the behavior of rubber like materials. To this end, we use the so-called GENT model that captures the lock-up effect of the molecular chain extensibility limit. When the stretch reaches a level of I1 minus 3 approaching Gm, the stress dramatic rise occurs and the material locks up. One should note that in the limit when Gm goes to infinity, this model is reduced to Neukian 1. After the deformation is performed, we ask a question. If there exist two or more equilibrium configurations in the vicinity of a deformed state? To answer the question, we introduce the tensor of elastic modular A, then the incremental nominal stress tensor is defined, and next the incremental equilibrium equations are written in the following form, which leads us to the deformulation of the strong electricity condition, where N and M are unit vectors in the reference and current configurations, respectively. So the ellipticity is lost when this condition does not hold true for any vectors n and m, excluding the pairs that produce zero vector product. We examine transversely isotropic composites with random microstructure and with fibers aligned along a direction. Here we use an alternative set of invariants introduced by De Botton and others in 2006. The motivation for use of this set of invariants has its origin in the fact that the following physical meaning can be given to, to them in a specific coordinate system. Lambda n is a stretch measure in the direction of fiber alignment. Lambda p is a stretch measure of the in-plane transverse dilatation. Gamma p is an, is an amount of shear in the transverse plane. And gamma n is a measure of out-of-plane shear. The fifth invariant, say gamma, describing the coupling between gamma n and gamma p, is omitted. Following the variational principle of the Bodon and Schmuel 2010, an estimate for the microscopic strain energy density function of a composite is introduced, where psi f and psi m are the strain energy density functions of the fiber and matrix phases, respectively. By application of the variational principle for the composite with gen phases, we obtain an explicit expression for macroscopic strain energy density function. It's very important to have an explicit form of the strain energy density function since 
in the following stability analysis its derivatives will be used. Consequently, these derivatives are explicit expressions too, and no numerical differentiation is needed. Moreover, a new upper estimate for the macroscopic strain energy density function of the composite with gen phases was introduced in this compact form. When the locking parameter gm goes to infinity, the strain energy density function does indeed reduce to the one introduced by the bottom and others in 2006 for the composites with Neukian phases. Here mu tilde is <coughs> in plane and out of plane shear moduli and mu bar is the deviatoric shear modulus. Next we are turning to the numerical simulations. In many cases the material can be assumed to be, a per, uh, to be periodic. Then the problem can be treated by investigating of a unit cell using periodic boundary conditions. These conditions connect variables on the opposite sides. An example of the deformation with this type of boundary conditions is presented. However, concentration of a deformation along the fibers demands essentially 3D analysis. To this end, the demonstrated 3D unit cell was built. Here we see an example of the periodic unit cell under out of plane shear deformation. To validate the representative properties of the unit cell, we have carried out the comparison between our analytical estimations and our numerical finite element simulations. The analytical est estimations of the deviatoric stress strain variation and the compression in the direction of fibers is presented by the blue solid curve. The upper estimated <coughs> stress strain variation is presented by the red dashed curve. The results of the numerical simulations are denoted by red triangles. We observe that before a certain point, the upper estimated model and the full estimation curves coincide. And moreover, they are in fine agreement with the numerical simulation results. Just to demonstrate the usefulness of the upper estimated model, we will go ahead and show the points at which onset of instability is detected. The green circle corresponds to the onset of failure detec detected analytically. Uh, the blue square is detected numerically. So the instability occurs much earlier than the upper estimated model begins to produce significant errors. Moreover, we have a parameter to control the onset of the odd behavior of the upper estimated model. In <coughs> In our numerical analysis, we define the average deformation gradient F via its counterpart in the principal coordinate system F prime and the transformation matrix Q. The tensor of elastic model is calculated in the principal coordinate system and the strong elliptic condition is checked. <coughs>